Hi there. So this is the first in a series of videos on apoptosis, or programmed cell death. So apoptosis is a process that occurs normally and naturally in organisms to remove unwanted cells. When does apoptosis occur? Uh, in many different uh, cellular and physiological processes. For example, apoptosis occurs during embryonic development. If you think about the webbing that is present between fingers, when fingers are developing, the cells in between the fingers need to be removed, and they die by apoptosis. In the development of the nervous system, so neurons are synthesized and then deleted uh, from nervous tissue, and those neurons will, trig will be deleted via apoptosis. Formation of immune cells, so B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes undergo development in the body, and through that development, they undergo processes of positive and negative selection. And those are used to delete uh, auto-responsive uh, auto, uh, immune cells from the body, as well as delete any non-functional B or T lymphocytes. So again, uh, cells triggering uh, death to remove them from the body. Uh, regulating organ and tissue physiology. So you have... Uh, cells in your body that need to be eliminated just to maintain the natural um, state of your organs. And also, uh, the body sometimes will trigger death of cells that are infected by a virus or detect precancer cells and delete them from the body. So apoptosis is a very normal, natural, highly regulated uh, cellular process. And uh, interestingly, it is defective in many cancer cells. Cancer cells have a really hard time triggering that apoptosis where they become resistant to apoptosis, and that was what uh, allows them to survive uh, in the body. When we talk about apoptosis, we're talking about cell death, but there are different types of cell death. There's necrosis, which is a more uh, traumatic cell death. When we talk about apoptosis, that's, that is an orderly cell death. It's an orderly cellular process. Necrosis uh, occurs when there is some trauma to the cells. So if a cell is punctured, that physical trauma, that'll lead to cell death, but that isn't necrosis. If cells are exposed to acids or bases, that chemical trauma will also trigger necrosis. Thermal trauma, heating a cell up, denaturing its proteins and DNA, or cooling it down, freezing it, causing ice crystals to form, uh, and damaging the cell. Again, cells will die by necrosis via those processes. Hypoxia, starving cells with, from, uh, of oxygen, again, will lead to like necrotic tissue forming, necrosis. Whereas apoptosis is a very orderly cellular process. It involves genes activating, involves proteins activating, involves enzymes activating. And so cells undergo this very orderly process um, by which uh, signals are sent through the cytoplasm of a cell and activating enzymes such as DNA, which destroys the DNA in the cell, proteases, which destroy proteins in the cell. Um, and there's this cellular process called blebbing, which the cell appears to basically be shedding parts of itself. So there are these little membrane-bound pieces, almost like very large vesicles that fall away from the cell. And these uh, blebs are recycled uh, by the body, uh, taking up uh, into macrophages. Phagocytes can actually identify these, take them into the phagocytes, and these uh, the components can be recycled. So apoptosis is a very orderly cellular process that is highly regulated. And that's what we're going to talk about in these series of videos. Um, how is apoptosis triggered? So there are many mechanisms that can trigger apoptosis, many proteins involved. And uh, in these series of videos, we're going to talk about two separate pathways by which apoptosis can be triggered, the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway refers to a cell sensing the stress within that cell. There is some stress occurring in the cell and there are proteins and other molecules in the cell that can detect that stress. And genes are turned on in that cell, proteins are activated within that cell, and the cell has decided itself that it is under, going to undergo apoptosis. So we'll, talk, we'll have some videos focusing on the intrinsic pathway, a cell 
telling itself it needs to dis destroy itself. And then there's also the extrinsic pathway, signals that coming from outside the cell telling the cell it needs to undergo apoptosis. So this could involve the immune system recognizing the cell as either being virally infected or being precancerous and telling the cell it needs to undergo cell death. Um, in both cases, for cancer cells, cancer cells are typically defective in both of these pathways. Cancer cells uh, should be recognized by the immune system and deleted from the body, but they have evolved mechanisms to resist the extrinsic pathway. And same thing with the intrinsic pathway, the stress of going through the cell cycle. Cells are unable to either sense the stress or they're unable to trigger the biochemical machinery involved in apoptosis. So cancer cells are resistant to apoptosis. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about here is the pronunciation of the word apoptosis. So I am pronouncing it correctly with the silent P. Yes, many people will call this apoptosis, but if you go back to the origins of the term, in the 1972 paper by Kerr, Wiley, and Curie, uh, they coined this term in the paper, and they uh, got the help of a uh, Greek professor, a Greek language professor, to come up with this term, to come up with a term uh, of what they saw under the microscope. And what they were looking at under the microscope was a cell undergoing this process whereby it looked like pieces were falling away from the cell, almost like leaves falling off a tree or petals falling off a flower. And so the uh, Greek professor, their colleague, uh, helped them coin this term uh, using these two uh, terms, ptosis, P-T-O-S-I-S, -S, the Greek term for falling, and the prefix apo, which means away or from or off of, because it looked like pieces of the cell were falling off of it. So the term apoptosis, uh, coined in 1972 in this paper, they specifically said that the P should be silent. The second P should be silent. And you know that there are silent Ps in the English language. Uh, pneumonia, psoriasis, pterodactyl, those are all letters with silent Ps. And actually, ptosis is a medical term uh, for a droopy eyelid. When the eyelid looks like it's falling, that is a medical term, ptosis. So the term apoptosis uh, is correctly pronounced when that second P is silent. Yes, of course, people understand you if you said apoptosis, but that is not the origin of the term. And in fact, there are other types of cell death, such as pyrotosis. You wouldn't pronounce that second P in pyrotosis, or else you'd be pronouncing it as pyroptosis, which again seems a little funny. Um, pyroptosis? No, it's pyrotosis, like it is apoptosis. And that py pyrotosis is actually another type of cell death, which we may get into in later videos. So for those of you um, watching this video who've always been pronouncing it apoptosis, Yes, of course, everybody knows what that means, but if you understand the origin of the word, you'll know that it's actually pronounced apoptosis.